hey, I'm Alvin, and today I'll be teaching you how to make my loaded scalloped potato dough. This recipe kind of came about when it was nearing the holidays, and everybody loves scalloped potatoes. I think it's one of the few dishes where if you bring it to a party, you can guarantee by the time that you leave, that plate is gonna be empty down to the last cheese bit. So during that time of the holidays, I was obsessed with using utensils and pots and pans and different things to make really cool shapes out of other foods that we love and know. One of the tools that I think is super, super underrated is a stainless steel mixing bowl. Because if you get the right kind of stainless steel mixing bowl, these are actually oven safe. You have this amazing hemisphere baking pan. I was like, that's really, really cool. Like maybe I could use this for something. The idea of scalloped potatoes is that you slice potatoes very thinly, very uniformly. You have like a bechamel sauce, you have some cream, you have some pepper, it's really, really delicious. I've never done this before. It was kind of scary because I didn't want to mess it up and waste a lot of food. The thing was for this video, I was carefully arranging potato slices so neatly that it took me forever to actually assemble it. I would like place a slice and make sure I had the right slice that would go next to it and cutting it was a pain. So this dish does take a little bit of time to assemble, but I think it comes out with a beautiful result. And you try to make sure that you layer it in an even way that when it cooks, it's these nice little layers of potatoes. I also liked how loaded baked potatoes, they had bacon, they have cheese, they have green onion. So I was like, okay, I wanna incorporate flavor into this yellow potato dish. So I would alternate layers of like potato and cheddar cheese and bacon and more potato and then chives or green onions and other kinds of cheese until basically like building layers and layers and layers of flavor. My hope is that by the time the cheese melts, it would actually serve as a glue to keep the whole thing together so that when you flipped it over, it wouldn't fall apart. So that's also why there's that much cheese in there. And cheese and potatoes, holidays, nobody's gonna complain why you have that much cheese in there. But if you're a lactose intolerant, maybe not the right dish for you. I think the key here is really, really make sure you have a tight overlapping seal with your potato slices all around, because that is essentially your shield for the entire thing. If that breaks, the whole thing's just gonna fall apart. pretty nerve-wracking the first time I took it out of the oven because you also have to let it cool for a very long time because you take hot potatoes, cheese, you flip it over, it's gonna go everywhere. The most nerve-wracking part for me was when I finally inverted it and like tapped it a bit and felt something plop hard onto a sheet and I was like, this is it. Either half of it's gonna be on the tray or the whole thing's gonna be on the tray. So either I'm going home very happy or very sad. So when I unveiled it, it was really, really cool because the potato had formed to the edge of the mixing bowl, making a really nice dome shape and it really had a nice fan pattern. After it slipped onto a tray, I bake it in the oven for a little more just to make sure that the edges could crisp up. Potatoes look delicious and golden brown and crispy. And after you cut into it and you pull it apart, you can see all your work pay off. There's just so many layers in there. It looked really, really cool the time I did it. I thought it was really fun. And to kind of add in that sauce that we didn't pour as much into, I think you can serve it with the sauce on the side. It's almost like a plated version of scalloped potatoes. I think it just is a different visual way to showcase scalloped potatoes. If you want to put in the extra effort, you can definitely throw in other fillings as well. Just make sure they're not too watery because if they're too watery, it'll cause everything to be a little like watery and we don't want watery potatoes. It is quite a interesting thing to pull off. It does take some time. It's not the easiest dish to make, but I think the results are well worth it. So if you do make it, please let me know because that is an achievement I think that deserves to be seen. So, uh, happy potato week. Oh, these lights are bright. Cool.